Picture this. It's your vacation. You've gone someplace cool, or maybe someplace hot. It could be someplace that's been on your bucket list forever, or perhaps you've just finally managed to get some time off and you're enjoying a staycation with the kids. Maybe you've gone on a business trip and you've got a little room for fun. Well, whatever the case, you've made it there and you've taken a whole bunch of great pictures. But then, something goes wrong. Maybe a crook runs off with your camera. Maybe a seal grabs your wrist-mounted GoPro along with some of your hand. There's a chance that your camera bag will spontaneously combust. Or maybe you've been studious about saving your pictures to your laptop, but you wake up one morning in your hotel and your laptop is screaming because the RAM is dead and the motherboard is inexplicably fried. When it comes to your pictures, anything can go wrong, causing you to lose precious moments that you've captured. So what's the best way to back up your pictures? We've taken a look at several different options, so here they are sorted by difficulty and expense. To start with, let's take a look at Google Photos. Now, I feel that Google Photos should be the first line of defense for any photographer. Whether you're just a casual photographer who occasionally takes pictures on the weekend with a smartphone, or a professional shooting 15 weddings a month, you've got to be using Google Photos. If you have an Android phone, you're probably already familiar with Google Photos, as it does come pre-installed on pretty much all modern Android phones. To describe Google Photos quickly, it's Google's photo sharing application slash platform that used to be tied to the now defunct Google Plus social network. While Google Plus is long dead, Google Photos is alive and kicking and receiving new features all the time. It's bursting at the seams of functionality. Besides some very well implemented basic functions, you know, albums and an easy way to search by file name, uh, Google Photos also has some really cool smart features. For example, there are automatically generated albums. So if you take a whole bunch of pictures while you're in New York City, and you take a whole bunch of pictures with both your phone and your camera, and you get home and you sync up your phone to Google Photos, and you upload the pictures from your camera to Google Photos, it'll automatically group those pictures together into an album of your time in New York City. Google Photos also features automatic GIF. I said it like a heathen. Google Photos also features automatic GIF creation from Burst Photos, so if you take a whole bunch of pictures in sequence, surprise, you've got a shiny new GIF. There is also facial recognition, so you can search by your friend's face. This might sound kind of lame initially, and it is probably a little bit creepy in the they're watching us kind of way, but think of it this way. If you need to, say, quickly put together an album of pictures of a friend who's maybe I don't know, moving far away to never be seen again, and you need those pictures just like that, you can use Google Photos' facial recognition functionality for that very purpose. Getting back on topic, however, Google Photos used to have a dedicated piece of backup software that you would download to your computer and use that to scrape it for images and videos to upload to the service. However, that's since been replaced by Google Backup and Sync, which combines that service with Google Drive. Using this new consolidated piece of software is pretty simple. You just go to google.com slash drive and download the software for your platform of choice. Once it's installed on your computer, it's pretty easy to let Google just suck up all the pictures and videos you've got on there. If you're using a cell phone, be it iOS or Android, all you need is the Google Photos application, which should get to work automatically sucking up your pictures. Now, the cool thing about the version for your computer is that if you allow it, Google will automatically dump SD cards right from your SD card reader up into the cloud. Based on the way it works, I do think it's actually pulling the pictures from the SD card reader onto a temporary folder on your computer and then uploading them, which not quite as cool as doing it right to the cloud, and if you have a lack of storage space on your computer, this may prove temporarily problematic. That said, it is a really neat feature. Now, as far as pricing goes, Google Photos offers a free tier with so-called high-quality photo backups. Uh, your pictures will be compressed to 16 megapixels and your videos are restricted to 1080p. If you want to save videos or pictures at higher resolutions, 
uh, you're going to want to either upgrade or recognize that you're only going to be able to upload a few gigabytes for free. You see, you only have finite space for original quality photos and videos, that is, those that are bigger than 1080 or 16 megapixels. Using the storage space for the original quality images actually counts against your so-called Google One storage. Your Google One storage is the storage that's shared across Google Drive, Gmail, and other Google platforms. This may prove problematic if you use Gmail and you run out of space. So if you really need to store a lot of pictures and videos at maximum resolution, you can pay $2 a month for 100 gigabytes of storage, or $3 for 200, or $10 per month for two terabytes of storage, which is pretty good. If you're not too worried about resolution and you need a quick, easy, free way to protect your pictures, Google Photos all the way. There's no downside to using it, unless you're worried about, you know, the whole Google Skynet thing, in which case, I understand. So, Google Photos Pros, infinite storage, but at limited resolution, smart features that allow you to search by subject, location, file name, and face, backup software available on Mac, Windows, and most mobile devices, Google Photos Cons, if you're concerned about Google having your data, Google Photos shows you that they know where you are, who you know, and what you photograph as you can literally search by subject. The AI is smart enough to know what wedding pictures look like, and while that's amazing, some people understandably find it a little bit creepy. Another con is that the backup software is unavailable on Linux, sorry to both of you, and max resolution backups will cost you money and count against your total Google storage, meaning that if you accidentally upload a few too many items at max resolution, you could cause yourself a space crisis without realizing it. Also, Google Space Crisis sounds like a really cool band name. Dropbox. Now, Dropbox has, in my opinion, fallen by the wayside in recent years. Uh, in case you haven't heard of it, it's a cloud backup service. It's one of the earliest to find a major success, in fact. Uh, and it's a great way to back up your pictures. It has a clean user interface, and it allows you to upload two gigabytes of whatever you want for free. And that's not a whole lot when it comes to pictures and videos. Uh, for some perspective, the competitor Google Drive allows free accounts to upload 15 gigabytes for free. Unlike Google Drive, however, Dropbox doesn't have a search functionality that's anywhere near as robust. You can't search by specific faces or places. Um, if you want to find your pictures from a trip to New York, but your pictures were geotagged, but you have uploaded them to Dropbox, well, let's just say you'd better remember when you took that trip or the file names because Dropbox just... Sorry, man. That said, for some people that's actually an advantage of Dropbox. If you're willing to pay $10 a month, you get two terabytes of storage, uh, much like Google offers. $20 a month will net you three terabytes, uh, plus some extra functionality that video professionals may find helpful. So if you're broke and you've somehow filled up your Google Photos storage with your max resolution pictures and you desperately need an extra two gigabytes, uh, you could spring for Dropbox. Plus, they have referral codes. Using these referral codes will earn you and anybody you refer to the platform extra free storage, maxing out at 32 gigabytes. That's a fair bit stingier than the now-defunct Copies referral program, but it's better than nothing. So, Dropbox Pros. Well, it doesn't belong to a company that decided don't be evil shouldn't be its motto anymore. It has a clean user interface, and it's dead simple to use, and it's oriented around file sharing, which could present some advantages depending on what business you're in. Dropbox also features Linux compatibility, which is pretty handy for both of you. Dropbox Cons. If you really want to use it as a backup solution, you'd better be prepared to shell out some money. It has no smart features like Google Photos, but for some people I know that's actually in the pro category. Shutterfly. Shutterfly is best known as a cheap photo printing service that's always throwing free offers at its users. Seriously, if you want a ton of free 4x6s, check out Shutterfly right now. At the moment, however, we're talking about photo backup solutions, and technically, 
Shutterfly functions as one. At the moment, according to their official FAQ, there's no limit as to how many pictures you can upload to Shutterfly. Shutterfly does recommend uploading your pictures at a maximum of 10 megapixels, which makes me suspect we're doing some compression on their backend if you upload anything bigger. If you're looking to upload very high resolution pictures for free, Shutterfly is probably not the solution that you're looking for. That said, there is no disadvantage to having your pictures uploaded to Shutterfly. It'll just take you a bit of time to do it. I do not, however, recommend using Shutterfly as your primary backup service. It could, however, be handy as a secondary backup service. The nice thing about Shutterfly is that it's surprisingly full of features. It'll enable you to create photo albums and sites, uh, meaning that if you want people to be able to order their pictures as prints, they can do it right from Shutterfly. All you have to do is share the photo site with them. Much like Google Photos, interestingly, you can sort your pictures on Shutterfly by date as well as by face, as it does feature some sort of facial recognition. Hopefully it's not being used for nefarious purposes. So the Shutterfly Pros, it's totally free. You can back up an unlimited number of pictures. You can easily and cheaply print photo books, photo prints, uh, albums, whatever you want, really, they make all sorts of stuff. You want fridge magnets? Shutterfly does it. Shutterfly Kongs. Well, it doesn't seem to be saving your pictures at max resolution, and the user interface is sort of clunky, because this wasn't really built to be a cloud backup solution, so much as a place for people to go, dump their pictures, and then get them printed. Adobe Creative Cloud. The Adobe Creative Cloud is their software suite of photo, video, and other creative editing tools. If you're a creative professional, there's a good chance that you're using this one. Now, there are a number of options for photo and video backup with Adobe. If you pay $10 a month for their photography plan, you'll gain access to a terabyte of cloud storage, which is half as much as you'll get with Google and Dropbox for the same price. But it does include access to their Lightroom software. If you're willing to pay $53 a month, uh, you can get up to 10 terabytes of cloud storage, plus access to Adobe's full suite of applications, which is fantastic if you're a prolific photographer or videographer. If photography is your business, yeah, this is a great solution. If you're a hobbyist photographer and you don't have a whole lot of money to spare, however, this is less than ideal. So, Adobe Pros, whether you're paying $10 or $53 a month, it does come with additional software that's continually getting updated, which is pretty cool. If you don't mind using the subscription model of software, this could be a great solution for you. It's also well integrated into said applications, making it easy for you to not just access your pictures, but also to edit them. Adobe Cons, there's no free tier, meaning that if you want to try this out, you'd better be willing to shell out some money. There are other cloud-based solutions for backing up your pictures. Uh, these include CrashPlan, Backblaze, and Carbonite. I haven't yet used CrashPlan, and to be honest, I'm not sure why. Uh, for $10 a month, you can back up an entire device. It doesn't matter how big this device is. The only catch is that it's $10 for that single device. So if you have just one laptop or desktop, $10 a month, protect everything that's on there, including your pictures. If you have 10 or more devices, Crash Plan may prove to be a less than ideal solution for you. That said, if you're spreading your pictures across 10 or more devices, I'm going to assume you've already got some sort of industrial grade backup in place. Now, I recommend using more than one cloud-based solution um, in order to protect your pictures, just in case your account on one of these is compromised. Or if a service goes down for any reason, you'll still have your pictures safe somewhere. So besides using multiple cloud-based options, you can also protect your pictures with in-house solutions. The first investment I recommend is a second hard drive or SSD for your computer preferably one with an external housing. There's a two-fold advantage to having an external hard drive to back up your pictures. Is there a hurricane flying up the coast and you need to evacuate lest you make eye contact with fate herself? Great. Be sure to grab your hard drive after safely ejecting hardware 
and hit the road. Having an external hard drive is useful outside of emergency situations as well. Maybe you're going on vacation someplace and you're not going to have access to your own computer, but you will have access to, say, a computer in a hotel. You can pop in your SD card, transfer your pictures to your external hard drive, and keep enjoying your vacation. Now, I don't personally recommend any particular brand of hard drive for your backups, so long as you're purchasing from a relatively reputable brand, such as Seagate or Western Digital, you'll probably be fine. That said, I do recommend looking into SSDs instead of traditional mechanical hard drives. The reason for this is that, as of late, SSD prices have been crashing beautifully. An SSD, in case you're not familiar with the term, is a solid state drive, meaning that it does not have any moving parts. Think of it as an extra fancy flash drive, or like one of your SD cards that you could slip into a camera. If you drop a hard drive while its platters are spinning, you run the risk of destroying the drive completely. If you drop an SSD while it's turned on, I mean, you might corrupt files if it gets unplugged somehow, but otherwise you're fine. To be clear, I do not endorse dropping expensive electronics. Do not drop expensive electronics. Thank you. While we're talking about hard drives, I also recommend investing in a NAS or Network Attached Storage System. A NAS is essentially a little server that you can put hard drives into, stuff into a corner somewhere, connect to your home network, and then just forget about it. It's a set it and forget it sort of solution. The advantage of using one is that any device on your home network can access the NAS. So you don't have to worry about plugging in and unplugging an external hard drive if you have multiple computers. The other thing about a NAS is that with the right software, you can access it from anywhere in the world, assuming you've got an internet connection. Meaning that if you're on vacation someplace distant, and you've already uploaded your pictures to your primary cloud backup services, you can then upload your pictures directly to your house. That said, a NAS is not a replacement for a cloud backup service, in my opinion, unless that NAS happens to be stored somewhere else aside from your primary computer. The reason for this is that if something happens, let's say there's a flood at your house and your NAS is destroyed, chances are your computer is going to get destroyed as well. The NAS is really a means of protecting your pictures against a hard drive crash on your computer. That said, the NAS contains a hard drive and hard drives sometimes crash, so that's another drive that you got to keep an eye on. If you're very privacy oriented, however, and don't want to put your pictures on any sort of external cloud backup service, then a NAS in a secondary location could be fantastic for your needs. There is a solution that is both extremely expensive and super impractical, but it will make you look very cool if you do it. Step one, purchase dozens upon dozens of SSDs. Step two, purchase a matching number of CubeSats that is, tiny satellites that can be cheaply launched into outer space. Step three, load your images onto the SSDs, load your SSDs onto the CubeSats. Step four, with the assistance of a rocket, Five, launch the SSD-laden CubeSats into two, low Earth orbit, one, into orbit around the moon, Mars, and into deep space. If you employ this CubeSat method, I strongly recommend making sure you invest in a model of CubeSat that includes not only wireless uh, communication capabilities, but solar panels in order to keep the device alive so long as it's within our solar system. This solution costs several million dollars. That said, if you happen to be wealthy beyond the wildest dreams of most of us, it's worth a shot. Heads up, however, this solution does offer some of the worst file retrieval speeds ever. I originally wrote a joke for this video that was meant to go along with the preceding joke. If you did not perceive the preceding as a joke, I advise you laugh now. But that joke was that you mail high resolution prints of your images to the Library of Congress as historically and culturally relevant artifacts. Apparently, however, that's actually an option. The United States Copyright Office is part of the Library of Congress, so you can, in fact, submit your photographs in order to protect them from a copyright standpoint. It will cost money, but if you are super worried about plagiarism, 
This is actually an option. It's not the most cost-effective way to back up your pictures, but it is super cool. What do you think about these solutions? Are you planning on making use of any of them? Are there backup solutions that you think we miss that you'd like to see us cover? Well, whatever the case, be sure to hit us up on Twitter and Instagram at thephotochan with two N's, and be sure to tell your friends.